Good evening, uh, good night, everyone. Welcome to our last the Joda Jody Campfire. Uh, remember that this is happening because uh, of the Joda Jody weekend around the globe. Uh, tonight we have a really interesting topic. As you can remember, in Campfire number one, in two, and three, we talk about different levels of diversity and inclusions and actions that have been happening in all the regions, not even local, but nationally, and even what's happening in diversity and inclusion in a full region. So now it's time to connect the dots with this last campfire. And in case you miss the, the other three campfires, you can go to scout.org slash Joda Jody Campfires and look for the replays. Um, OK, I'm Luis. And for these 30 minutes, we will hear about an exciting tool from a professional staff member in Wasom in Kuala Lumpur. Her job is assisting to provide proof of the impact of scouting in reaching out to all. Following, uh, yes, remember that after the presentation, you can submit your questions. Uh, you can submit them in the comment box that you see on your right side. Or if you go to uh, questions and topics, you can see an orange button there where you can submit your questions. Yes, just as Wendy just did now, OK? So remember to submit your questions. And by the end of the presentation, Hannah will answer them. Now it's my pleasure to introduce Hannah. Hannah Pasik uh, works as manager for impact assessment at the World Sky Bureau Global Support Center in Kuala Lumpur. Through her work, she supports national scout organizations on measuring the social impact of scouting. She's originally from Bosnia and joined scouting when she was 11 years old. Progressing through a scout leader and later international commissioner for scout association in, in, in Bosnia and Herzegovina, Hannah is passionate about measuring and evaluating impact, as she believes that by understanding the impact we have as scouts, we can increase the quality of the program we deliver, reach out to more young people worldwide, and ultimately contribute more to the communities where we live in. Hannah will be talking about the impact of scouting, witnessed through the messengers of peace evaluations as example of efforts in measuring the impact of scouting and how we do go about measuring impact in NSOs. So uh, help me welcome in Hannah. Hi Hannah, how are you doing? Hi Louis, thank you very much for the lovely introduction. And hello everyone, greetings from Budapest. I'm joining you from Hungary. 
this morning here. It's 10 a.m. Great. All right. So I think we're ready to start. So here we go. Excellent. Thank you very much. So greetings again to all of you. I'm very excited to be here with you and talk to you about social impact. Uh, I have a short presentation ready for you, which is going to kind of give us an overview of what it is, uh, what social impact is in scouting and why are we talking about social impact and why is it important to measure it. Uh, after my presentation, I'd like to hear your thoughts and I'd be very happy to answer any questions you might have. Uh, so please take note, uh, during, you can also put it in the comment section during the presentation itself and I'll refer to your questions afterwards. So here we go. The first uh, thing we're going to talk about is a little bit of background. Why do we talk about social impact? In 2014 at the World Scout Conference, national scout organizations said that social impact should be a priority for the next 10 years in WASM. And um, at that time, they said they need help with measuring impact, but they also need to learn how to increase it and how to promote it. And as a result of that, the World Scout Committee formed a group called Reaching Out to All, which is also the one to thank for these lovely campfires which works on uh, measuring the impact of scouting in the first place and before that, uh, defining it. So there's this big task uh, ahead of the reaching out to all group in saying what it is that social impact uh, means in a scouting context and how do we define it and then how do we measure it. So the group started with a very simple uh, definition. Scouting's uh, social impact equals the effect of scouting activities on individuals and communities. Therefore, everything that we do as scouts, including our regular weekly meetings as scouts, our camps, etc., everything that we do that belongs to the youth program, but also everything that we do uh, in terms of serving our communities, is in fact social impact and does affect the individuals, meaning scouts, and their communities. We talk about three different levels of social impact. We talk about impact on personal level, community level, and institutional level. And what's important to note here is that these three levels are not separate bubbles. They work combined, they work together. And if you look at it, they have a lot of overlapping um, themes. And that's why it's sometimes difficult to understand what it is actually that um, defines the three different separate spheres. We've tried to set it out in a simple way so that everybody can understand a little bit of uh, what it is that personal impact is and what it is that community impact and institutional impact are. On a personal level, we talk a lot about development, development of the individual and enabling young scouts, but also adults in scouting to grow personally. And we talk about physical development, intellectual development, emotional development, social and spiritual development. I'm sure that all of you back at home can think of specific scouting activities that help uh, in these certain areas of development. Like for example, when you do a hike, that contributes to the physical development of individuals. Or when you do a spiritual session, when you, have, when you visit uh, either a church or a mosque with your group and then have a discussion afterwards of what it is that you've learned or what it is that they felt, that's uh, aligned to spiritual development. So there are different activities that you might be aware of that you do in your local groups that contribute to these particular areas of development. Now, there are some uh, personal level developments uh, that are also community related. For instance, we talk about scouting developing leadership, inspiring volunteering, being inclusive and diverse as you've already heard through the previous three campfires. We also talk about scouting contributing to sustainable development and uh, protecting our environment. And we talk about employability skills. So scouting develops employability skills. So all of these relate to how scouting impacts individuals on a personal level, but also have a link to community. And then when we talk about the community itself, of course, the first thing that you would think of are, is the community service. The simple things that your group does in terms of uh, helping uh, the elderly or joining in um, a different cleaning activity, for example, of a riverbank, etc. These are the things that you do on a regular basis and they do contribute to achieving impact on a community level. 
On a more um, profound level, we talk about scouting creating active citizens. That means that throughout your scouting education, you are taught not to be a bystander, but to take action in your communities. And finally, we talk about the Better World Framework. You've probably all heard about Messengers of Peace, maybe Scouts of the World Award and the World Scout Environment Program. All of these were developed on global level to enable young people to work within a certain framework to achieve a positive change in their communities. I encourage you, if you haven't heard about these programs, to take a further look into them on Scout.org. And I want to talk a little bit about institutional impact. This level of impact is pretty much the hardest to understand because it's not very tangible. It's not something you see happening on a daily basis. But what it means is when your national scout organization is invited to participate in a governmental meeting on a certain youth policy or a debate on youth rights or education policies, that is the institutional impact where your organization is invited to give input uh, on a national level or even international level on topics that are related to young people. Now, I also want to talk to you about um, some of the learnings we've had when it comes to measuring impact uh, of the Messengers of Peace initiative. And what we found is very interesting. In fact, we found that for every one dollar invested in the Messengers of Peace initiative, there were over 130 registered hours of service. And this is only registered hours of service on Scout.org. We also found that for every Messengers of Peace project, uh, funded and non-funded, they provided five months of community service. So that means that uh, basically for, for every project, and we have 700, uh, 170,000 of them registered on Scout.org, there has been five months of service provided. That's an amazing number. And you can just imagine around the world how much good it generated in communities. We also talk about grassroots projects. Um, there were over 850 unfunded projects for, for every one funded project. And this is this ripple effect that we believe the Messengers of Peace Initiative has managed to achieve uh, in local communities where once there's been this um, seed planted of promoting the message of peace, there were a lot of others who were interested in taking that and building upon it and developing it further. So the images that you can see here are all from Scout.org and they present different types of grassroots projects. Um, and I'd like to show you a few more where it was very obvious that Messengers of Peace uh, inspired dedicated volunteers to deliver community service. And this community service ranged really from uh, promoting peaceful elections in Kenya and Ghana, as you can see in, on the left-hand picture, to um, helping the elderly um, in, in a home. So these, these kinds of things are uh, something that, oops, sorry. <laughs> these things are something that really influences community for the better. And we've seen it through the evaluation of the initiative and through measuring its impact that it really achieves uh, substantial uh, good and contributes to the well-being of communities. Now, you might be asking yourself, but that's, that's all really nice, those numbers look really good, but how it is that you actually measure impact? And that's a valid question. Now, when we talk about measuring impact in scouting, we often base uh, our impact measurement on personal experiences and those are the stories that, for example, I, as somebody who evaluates impact, would go into a community and ask scouts, so what, what it is that you've done that you believe achieved impact? And that's where I hear a lot of wonderful, life-changing stories from people all over the world, like you, scouts. And then there's, of course, anecdotal evidence where, uh, for example, I go to an event and I meet a lot of scouts from around the world and they start telling me about all of the great things that their scout groups have done back at home. So I haven't really experienced it firsthand, but I hear from somebody who has. And up until now, up until recently, in scouting, we focused mainly on these two areas of um, measuring impact, collecting personal stories and anecdotal evidence. However, now what we're trying to do is dig a little bit deeper and do accurate measurements. So measurement through numbers, uh, but also qualitative measurement. And 
why is this actually important? Uh, you, you might be asking yourself, but we know we're doing good things. Why do we need to measure it? Why, why do we need to prove it? The reasons are two, and they're very simple. First, we need to know for sure what it is that we do well and what we need to improve, what it is that we need to do better. Measuring impact is going to show us that what we presume we're doing good, either it is that way, we are doing good, we should just keep on going, or it might actually show us that it's not quite as we thought it would be. And there might be a need for some adjustments in our program. Now, apart from this, of course, an important reason is explaining to those around us what are the benefits of scouting. If we don't know how to show them what it is that uh, scouting achieves, what is the impact of scouting, they might not be that interested in us. They simply might say, well, I don't really understand what it is that you do and I don't understand how it would benefit me or my community, so I'd rather not get involved. And if we measure our impact and if we have really figures and documented personal stories to explain it, then that might be different and then we might be able to persuade people a bit more. Um, and finally, what it is that we're doing on global level to ensure that there is a measurement of impact. We're developing a very interesting tool for national scout organizations that can be used on national and local level for measuring impact. And it's based on a cost benefit analysis whereby national organizations take a look at what is the total amount of effort um, they invest in delivering scouting compared to what is the total benefits to society from delivering scouting. And this we do through a set of surveys and questions that are dispersed to scouts, um, leaders, and also community representatives. And this gives us a very interesting uh, ratio. Basically, it tells us that, for example, in community X, for every $1 invested in scouting, the community benefits by 10 or $20. And these kinds of information uh, really sound interesting to those outside of scouting because they're represented in a language that they can understand. And so our goal on a global level is to help national scout organizations not only measure their impact, but also communicate it clearly to those outside of scouting. Now, this has been a very, very brief introduction to what it is that we're doing on global level when it comes to talking about social impact and measuring social impact. And um, I would like to close it here. Uh, and I'd be very happy to take questions from you now. So I'm back on the screen. Great. And I can see that we already have Dr. Vicky from uh, Australia, correct? Who says, I'm interested in how you will qualitatively evaluate the measurements into topics and outcomes to move forward. The survey idea is great as it, it is quantifying what you're doing. Thank you, Dr. Ricky, for your comment, and uh, I'd like to respond. Of course, when we talk about measurement, we don't only talk about uh, numbers. We talk also about the qualitative aspect. And you guessed right, through the surveys, we're trying to collect also the experiences of young people and adult leaders who have gone through scouting, uh, collect their stories, collect their, um, the personal impact that scouting has had on them, and document it uh, in a qualitative way. Now, the surveys themselves uh, contain questions about what it is, what are the biggest benefits of scouting for you? And those benefits are described in simple sentences, such as, for example, um, I feel more, uh, I feel healthy and fit as a cause of scouting, or I feel that uh, I've developed resilience and I feel I can express myself clearly without uh, the fear of being mis uh, misinterpreted, etc. So there's a lot of these kinds of uh, areas that we've mapped out and try to uh, single, in, single out in questions um, in order to ask scouts what it is that they've benefited most from scouting. And with these questions, the intention is to really see uh, what are the top benefits and how is the program correlated to those benefits. So in every country, you're going to be able to look at uh, what it is that your program delivers versus what it is that scouts actually benefit most from. Um, I hope this answers your question. If you want to follow up, please comment again. Um, and I see we have a second question from Jeff, who says, uh, what ideas do you have that will highlight the positive social impact scouting is having on all our communities? How do we get the message out? That's an excellent question. Thank you, Jeff. 
I would like to answer it through the perspective of the Messengers of Peace Initiative. So um, as you might have seen uh, on scout.org, our intention is to share as much as possible of the great experiences that scouts have been doing around the world. And it's not just through scout.org, it's also through social media. And we would like to inspire scouts to share with each other. So uh, it's not only about us collecting these practices on a global level, it's also about each and every one of you uh, participating and giving a contribution in terms of showing others what it is, what is the great positive impact you've had in your own communities. So, for example, Jeff, if you write on scout.org about a project that you've completed in your local community, somebody in India might see that and say, well, this is great and maybe we can do something very similar to this. And that's the whole idea of sharing and spreading the message about doing good and uh, the Messengers of Peace Initiative has tried to encourage this as much as possible. Um, and that's why we're using Scout.org in that purpose of enabling Scouts to share between each other. Um, Jeff, does that answer your question? I'm going to check if we have... Ah, okay. We have another question while I uh, wait for a response from... Uh, Vicky and Jeff to hear if their questions were answered. We, ah, okay, Jeff is answering. He says, uh, that sharing is a great idea, but it's internal. What about, out ah, okay, outside of scouting, good point. So indeed, we do need to share outside of scouting as well on what are the, the benefits uh, that we achieve. And uh, one of the projects that we're working on currently is developing another evaluation mechanism which would compare scouts versus non-scouts through which we could show the uh, contribution of scouting to the development of skills, attitudes and knowledge and behavior uh, among young people and show that there is actually a difference between those who are involved in scouting and those who are not. And in that sense we want to use that information collected on a global level to promote it outside of scouting to our external partners. And when we talk about sharing outside on a global level, we talk mainly about showing what it is that we do to our external partners and potential donors. Um, and we would collect this data in a way that would be exciting and uh, interesting for them to hear, and which shows clearly the correlation between the causal effect between being a scout and having a list of positive attitudes, uh, skills and knowledge developed among young people. So from, from a global perspective, we share to our partners and to potential donors. And we would like to see um, that trickle down also to, to local levels where national scout organizations would be inspired to do something similar on a national and local level. Okay, I had one more question from uh, Linda and if, if this responds well, Please do uh, let me know, uh, Jeff. Uh, so Linda says, how do we involve young people in measuring the impact of scouting? Thank you for the question, Linda. And I would like to say that um, young people are definitely the ones that could contribute most to this kind of um, exercise of measuring scouting's impact. Because they're tech savvy and they use social media, they're constantly online, they are the ones who have an opportunity to reach out to a lot of young people and gather their input and gather their thoughts. And this is why we would like to involve them as much as possible in um, measuring the impact of scouting, but also uh, not just in collecting the data, but also contributing to the development of the questions that we ask. That's why it's important to involve them in the process from the onset and have them uh, contribute to the development of questions from their own perspective of thinking of what it is that they have uh, achieved through scouting and what it is that they've benefited most from scouting in order to uh, include that experience in the surveys that we developed in the questionnaires, etc. So it's important that they're involved on two levels. Firstly, in the development of, of the questions that we ask, the research questions that we ask, and secondly, in disseminating the, the tools that we develop and really trying to collect as much as possible data. Thank you, Linda. I had a comment from Dr. Vicky who said, certainly I like the idea of the collection of data that is not just figures. Uh, I imagine that there are common themes emerging, definitely. Thank you for the comment. Um, we have, and scout.org is a great place for data, definitely. So thank you, Dr. Vicky, for commenting. 
Um, we have another question from Monico who says, how do you involve scouts who don't have access to internet or media in measuring social impact on their projects or communities? Excellent question. Thank you for, for raising that. Um, and I'll take an example here. I've recently talked with our friends um, in Kenya who have grown their membership from 300,000 to a million recently. And they have um, achieved a very substantial growth, therefore, in, in a very short period of time. And they reached out uh, to uh, the World Cup Bureau in, in, uh, for support in terms of specifically measuring impact. But they said that one of our limitations is that they, they can't reach people through online uh, surveys. And what we did is discuss with them a possibility of having a paper survey, which they would then distribute to their local units. And then each local unit leader would be in charge of collecting the data and then inserting it uh, into an Excel sheet, basically, and then sending it to a central collection point. So even in those kinds of cases, even though it would take a little bit more effort on the part of uh, a unit leader or uh, the national leadership, there is still a possibility for collecting the data. And when we talked about it with our friends in Kenya, they said that would work perfectly because that's exactly the system that they use in uh, registering their membership. So when they went out and when they said, we want to document accurately what number we actually are in Kenya, they literally went out to each of the national, uh, to each of the local uh, unit leaders and said, we want you to fill in these forms and we want you to enter that into one collection point, uh, one Excel sheet. And they said it was a tedious exercise, but they're willing to do it because they're willing to measure their impact. So as long as there's willingness on the part of a national organization or on the part of the local level, uh, there is a possibility and there is an opportunity to, to indeed measure impact. Thank you for the question, Monica. I hope this answers it. You can give feedback. Uh, we had one comment first from Jill Hall. I know you are measuring the benefit from outcomes of MOP projects. Do you get any feedback from people outside of scouting who have benefited from these MOP projects? Very good question. Thank you. Um, I can comment from the perspective of 14 case studies that we've conducted as part of the research on Messengers of Peace. And through those case studies, we have talked with representatives of schools, of municipalities, of churches uh, or church communities. And the feedback we've got was overwhelmingly positive, where they've said that through the Messengers of Peace projects that have been completed in their community, the scouts have involved others. And that's how they got to know about Messengers of Peace. So when we talked about um, the Messengers of Peace project that happened in Madagascar recently, Heart, called Heart of Peace in 2013, we talked with several um, priests who, whose communities, pastors whose communities were involved uh, through the project itself in helping uh, people who have been affected by floods in Madagascar. And they said that uh, through the Messengers of Peace project, the scouts united the two communities. They united the scouting uh, with the church community and they went into action together. So we've seen very positive examples where scouts have used uh, the umbrella of messengers of peace to reach out to different communities, to those who are part of their local community, but might not necessarily have a collaboration already developed with scouting. So that was something where um, we have a, a very interesting example of potential collaborations developing through messengers of peace projects. And this is just uh, one illustrative example, but from, from the 14 case studies we've done, the overwhelming response is positive and, and uh, community representatives involved really had uh, high regard for, for what's been uh, happening in their local communities. Thank you. Uh, we have one more question. Uh, Jill, please feel free to comment and say if that answers your question. Uh, one more question which says, uh, how do we encourage national scout organizations that we need to measure impact? Thank you very much for mentioning this. Um, to answer your question, it's very simple. We have two reasons for measuring impact. One is knowing if we, what we're doing is good and if we need to improve it. And second is to show those outside of scouting what it is that we do um, and what is the impact we achieve. National scout organizations, one, one of the great things about measuring impact is that whatever you do, whatever you uh, find out through a measurement, you can keep as an internal piece of information. So there's nobody who's pushing you to say, 
uh, yeah, this is uh, the results of your impact study and we want it to be published now. So it's something that a national scout organization can do and it, if it happens, which we very uh, highly doubt that it would happen, that you find that you're not achieving that much impact, it's actually still very valuable information for you because then the National Scout Organization can look into its program, its structures, its uh, adult training, and see if there's a missing link. If there's something that uh, you might not be doing that's up to the standards of it, that it, to which it should be in order to achieve impact. So in that sense, it would be very good to still do this exercise, even if you don't want to publish the results, to have a sense of how much impact you're achieving and whether or not that impact is up to a level which you expected and what it is that uh, you're missing in uh, contributing to even more impact in, on a personal level among your scouts, but also in your local communities. So that's one thing in terms of the learning point. And in terms of the second reason, explaining to others what it is that scouting does, we firmly believe that through accurate measurement, uh, showing to partners what it is that we do is going to give a lot more credibility to scouting's work rather than just sharing person stories, which are also amazing, but you do need to document them and substantiate them with some uh, more quantitative and qualitative research. And in that sense, when you come to an external partner and show them and say, these are the benefits, these are the five key benefits that scouts have from uh, being part of, of our movement. And you can list those, and then you can also say, uh, with the with an investment of X number of dollars in scouting, you achieve, I don't know, uh, 20 times more uh, of benefit to a community. So these kinds of uh, numbers plus stories help you present scouting in a way in which it's understandable to those outside of scouting. I hope this answers the question. And we have thanks from Jill, that's good to know. Um, do we have any more questions? Let's see. We had a comment from uh, Dr. Ricky that the survey idea is great as it is quantifying what you're doing. Thank you. We're looking forward to uh, implementing it. Okay, I think we're all questioned out. All right, so if there's no more questions, uh, I'd like to thank you for your attention. Thank you for listening in. Um, if there's anything else you would like to ask, I'm going to type in my email here. Um, and if you're particularly interested in something, please do let me know uh, when it comes to social impact. I'd be very happy to communicate with you and help your national scout organizations um, in measuring impact. Uh, please do get in touch. Um, and I hope this was useful for you. Thank you. Louis, back to you. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much, Hannah. Uh, this is how we come to uh, our last campfire now. So thank you. Thank you very much for showing how can we show uh, social impact? How can we measure it? So through all these campfires, we have now connected all the dots. So if you have more questions, please, uh, you can reach out Hannah. There's the, her uh, email in the comment box. And for the replays, you can find them in scout.org slash campfires. Thank you, Hannah, for sharing this uh, with everybody today. Thank you, everyone who wake up really early or who got a time in the Joda Jody events. Thank you for tuning in for the fourth campfires. I uh, will look forward for you to share and comment and start working on these diversity and inclusions and measuring your impact in your local or national scouting community. Thank you very much, Hannah. Thank you, everyone, for uh, connecting by. And see you in the next campfire. Keep enjoying Joda Jerry Weekend. This is not over yet, OK? Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Perfect. Bye.